Hey everybody, this is Freddie with LeviathanScuba.com. We are continuing the Leviathan video series on how to stretch your tank longer. We're going through all things you're going to need to make your dive last longer. We'll get to that in just a minute. We're continuing in our series and we're now talking about those skills that you can improve on to make your dive last longer, to conserve your air more. And I've saved the most important skills as well as the number one skill for this video. So let me start out with don't use your hands. <laughs> So you're looking across at all these other divers and there's the newer divers you can usually tell because they're doing this, right? They're, they're, they're trying to tread water underwater and they're moving their hands all over the place and things like that. Well, you, you can imagine not only is that taking effort and uh, raising the heart rate, they're breathing a little harder, but they're not very streamlined like that. Their, their hands are out here all the time and they're steadying themselves and all that kind of stuff. That's just kind of a sign of a newer diver. When you look at the divers that have been diving a very long time, they're gonna be you know, very streamlined. They're gonna try to keep their hands tucked in and things like that as well as all their gear. And in the previous videos, if you haven't seen them, check them out because we talk about all the gear related issues that you can do to, to conserve air as well. So let me give you a suggestion. Just try this sometime. Reach behind you with your hands and grip the bottom of the bladder on your BC, the bottom of the, the part that inflates normally. Just hold on to it with your fingers. It's very easy. It's not hard to grip it. And your shoulders are backwards. You're more hydrodynamic, able to go through the water. Even this increases your bulk and the size of, of where your arms are. And you have to push these not very fluid things through the water. You're a little bulkier when you do that. But when your hands are down and you've got them behind you a little bit, hanging onto the BC bladder, you're very fluid. And I'm gonna tell you, it's a skill that you can master. Um, you, you can turn any way you need to turn with your fins, right? Even going through a wreck, I like to try to keep my arms back going through a wreck because you don't stir up as much water. And for sure, you're not doing this kind of thing, okay? So that's a skill to practice. And I'm gonna say kick more efficiently as well. Um, you can understand that a bicycle kick gets very little thrust. So you have to do a whole bunch of those bicycle kicks to go anywhere. Whereas if your fins went through the water wide and grabbing all the water they can, you're gonna be a lot more efficient. Now, I'm even going to suggest to get double the amount of thrust. How do you do that? Most people, when they kick, they, they kick forward with a thrust, with some energy. So you kick your leg, right? And you use energy to do that. Then you reset with no energy as your other side kicks. So you kick with some thrust, then you kick with some thrust, then you kick with some thrust. You get it? Now, what if you doubled that? Meaning, kick with some thrust pull back with some thrust, right? Just like that exercise machine in the gym where you know, you're doing leg lifts against weight. Well, they also have one where you have to pull back against weight. So kick with some force, pull back with some force at the same time as this one kicks, and then pull back with some force. So instead of one, two, now you get one, two, three, four four thrust kicks with the same exact cycle. Doesn't mean you have to kick hard and raise your heart rate because you're exercising more. Just those little kicks that you do, do it with force in both directions, okay? Much more efficient, you actually conserve air better. This next one also sounds very obvious, but dive more. New divers go through uh, a time period, I'm gonna say approximately 25 to 30 dives, where their brain is still getting acclimated to diving. And what I mean by that is, we humans have an instinct not to breathe underwater. If your head gets pushed underwater, you lock up. Babies do it, if you drop them in a pool, they don't breathe. And so we have that instinct that we have to fight against, or we have to learn away from. So, when a diver goes underwater, 
what do they do? They inhale more and they, for, they force against holding it longer. You never hold your breath. But what happens to a newer diver? They're underwater and then they exhale. Instead of exhaling deep, they only exhale a little bit and then they inhale again because they think they need all this air in their lungs. It does a couple things. It makes it harder to be buoyant because you have a lot more inflation in your lungs, therefore you're a lot more buoyant. But it's also, you don't exhale fully. So the more scuba diving you do, at some point, 25 to 30 dives or so, maybe even a little more if it's been a while since you've been diving, your brain says, gee, I'm not gonna die, and it's gonna allow you to breathe a little easier. It is something you'll catch yourself doing. It's not conscious all the time. But if you do dive more, the experience is gonna tell your brain you're not gonna die and it's gonna allow you to breathe more normally. Okay, let me talk about that instinct a little further. If you were to imagine the, the quantity of volume of air your lungs can hold, many people, newer divers, will fill it all the way to the top. Well, you're not doing that now. You're watching this video, you're relaxed, you're not even paying attention to how you're breathing. But if you do, you're gonna say, hey, I'm only inhaling two thirds of my lung and I'm exhaling down to about a third. But when you scuba dive, what do you do? You inhale higher and you exhale more, or you should. But newer divers don't exhale as much because their brain says, I need to keep my lungs full of air. Okay, so keep that in mind and you don't have to keep your lungs all the way full. And when we get to the skill of talking about breathing, you will find that you will breathe much more naturally with the more dives you have, okay? Now the next thing is, I'm gonna grab something. The next thing I'm gonna recommend is nitrox, okay? Nitrox, go take yourself a nitrox class. It is the number one class taken from any agency. And what nitrox is, if you don't know, is, uh, you see it's always labeled this way, nitrox, and it's usually green, green and yellow, and it's global. You have to be certified in it because you're actually breathing a higher concentration of oxygen, okay? So take a nitrox class. What that's gonna do for you is it's going to aid you in the amount of oxygen in your lungs. So, when you inhale, you inhale 21% out of a normal tank. Right now, you're breathing 21%. What you're exhaling is 17% oxygen. Your brain knows the difference, big time, if you're exhaling any less than 17% oxygen. So, you're out taking a jog, your heart rate increases, what does your brain do? It says, hey, I need more air. I need more oxygen because now you're exhaling 16.8% instead of 17%. So your heart rate increases, your breathing gets deeper, your lung capacity is faster or uh, is more and you're breathing faster. Same exact thing underwater. If you are exhaling less than the 17%, your brain wants to protect you and bring in more. So nitrox, you inhale 32% oxygen or 36% oxygen, and those are the two most common. And when you exhale, you still have plenty. So what does your brain say? I'm fine, I have all the oxygen I need. I don't need to increase the heart rate as much. I don't need to increase the breathing amount because I have plenty, so I'm fine. It also has some other benefits to it. You can dive longer for sure, stretch your tank longer because you have more air, but you're more aware because your brain loves oxygen. It likes to be very acute and thinking with, you know, the more oxygen, the better. And you burn off the nitrogen because you have less in your system and you have more oxygen, less uh, surface interval in between dives. You'll have to check out our video on nitrox. It's a great class to take, but it is definitely a very important way to stretch a tank longer. The next one, again, is probably the one that's practiced by most people. The shallower you are, the less air you use. It's like the physics, the, the laws you learned when you learn to scuba dive. If you're on the surface, your lungs hold this much air. At 33 feet, they still hold as much, but because the air is compressed, the quantity that you bring in, the volume is the same, your lungs are full. 
However, it takes twice the amount of compressed air to fill those lungs up. So you're going through the fixed amount in your scuba tank twice as fast. You head down deeper, it's even more. So the more shallow you are. So from getting from here to your dive site, you can do it at the bottom at 45 feet or whatever the sand is to get over there, or you can do it at 15 feet. You're going to use less air at 15 feet. Everybody knows it's just an easy way to conserve air, but every little bit makes a difference. So exercise, fitness, that doesn't mean that an athlete isn't going to suck a tank down real fast. And an older guy like me can stretch a tank a long time. But all things being equal, if I exercised, my body uses air more efficiently. I'm going to be even longer the next time I go diving if I'm better uh, athletically, if I'm, if I'm fit and my body uses air more efficiently, okay? Here's another thing to think about. Be aware of currents. F people find themselves swimming against currents quite often, or even if they're kind of going along with the flow of the current and then they turn and wait for somebody they're swimming against the current, you can kind of duck down behind a rock or something like that. Just be aware of currents. And if you're, anytime you're swimming against the current or holding still in a current, having to hold your position, you're using up more air, okay? And now, the number one skill to master is the way you breathe. Now I'm gonna step on some toes. I know I'm gonna have some people challenge me in the comments below. That's just fine. I'm, I'm willing to go and compete to prove my point. Many newer divers do something called skip breathing. You were taught not to do it for a reason. And some people will call it shallow breathing, things like that. And they convince themselves, they are adamantly believing that they can stretch a tank longer. And basically what skip breathing is, or shallow breathing is, you breathe from here to here instead of your full lung capacity, or deep and deep exhale. They breathe shallow. They think they're using less air. Tinier breaths mean less air out of the tank. I get, it. I get the science behind it, but it doesn't work, and I'm going to explain why. Skip breathing is a little bit different, and that is you inhale slow, you pause or basically you are holding your breath at the top of your inhale. Not long, not ascending, just a short count. One, two, three, four, five, and then you exhale. One, two, three, four, five, and then you inhale. Okay, that's called skip breathing. You think it works? I know you do. It doesn't work. I'm gonna tell you why. You are human. I'm human. We're built the same. Again, back with the nitrox explanation. When you inhale, and you inhale to a certain level and you start to hold your breath, your heart, your lungs is burning up the oxygen. You're consuming the oxygen in your body. So when you exhale, you exhale instead of 17% oxygen, you exhale 16 point whatever. Your brain can tell a tenth of a percent. And you can't help it but to keep your heart rate slow, the, the, the normal way. Your, your heart rate's gonna increase. Your breathing is gonna increase. Go just jog a mile and tell me you can hold your breathing exactly the same as before you started. You can't do it. So in scuba diving, you can't either. If you inhale and you exhale and your brain determines that you need more oxygen because you held your breath, you consumed more of that oxygen in your lungs. Your heart rate increases, you're breathing, you're gonna breathe deeper and you're gonna bring breathe faster. So yes, maybe for the first minute, two minutes, three minutes, you feel like you're conserving air and you're not going through as much. Once your body starts to feel that fatigue of the air and it needs more, it's going to sabotage you and it's going to make it worse for you and you absolutely will start consuming more air. You can't help it. You're human. So let's talk about what you do. What is the number one skill to stretching a tank? We've talked about equipment, we've talked about skills, exercising, all these kind of crazy things. But the number one thing you can do is breathe properly. What is properly? Slow and deep. Now guys, that doesn't mean as much air as you can possibly fit into your lungs, because your lungs are bigger than the gals, but you can bring so much air in that you're gonna waste it and not get the use of it. What I'm saying is, if you breathe kind of normal, like you're doing right now watching the TV, breathe deep, 
but you need to evacuate that air. Don't go shallow, don't go halfway out, go much more than half. So right now, just sitting here watching the video, you're breathing two thirds full, and you're breathing out to down to about a third. If you breathe in three quarters, you're still fine. If you exhale more, the secret is to getting rid of the carbon dioxide and replacing that with oxygen. If you breathe shallow, you never evacuate all the CO2. That can bring uh, challenges to your dive. I have seen people get um, carbon dioxide saturation. And what that means, it actually mimics decompression sickness. You can get tingling, you can get sore joints, you can get headaches, you can get all these things that makes you feel like, wow, I'm getting the bends, but I only went 50 feet, 60 feet. It's because they were breathing shallow. They had a buildup of carbon dioxide in their body. What does your body do when you have that happen? It starts giving you these symptoms and you'll pass out eventually. And so, so breathe a little deeper, three quarters full, or so, and exhale more than you would normally, which is counterproductive underwater. Your brain wants you to keep air in your lungs. It doesn't feel right to totally exhaust your lungs and get rid of all the air because you're underwater and you need air, but you need to train yourself to do this. Just remember, slow and deep, slow and deep. Rather than inhaling and pausing and counting, inhale and count on the way in. One, two, three, four, Five, one, two, three, four, five, right? Slow and deep. That is absolutely the best way to stretch a tank longer, to get the best use and get the most dive time you can get. So I sure hope that this series has helped you because that's why we do it. Be sure to check us out on leviathanscuba.com and make it a great day. And you know what? Did I miss something? If you can think of something I missed on how to stretch a tank longer or your best strategy, leave it in the comments below. And if it works, we'll add it to the next video. Have a great day. You know, the difference between a new diver and an experienced diver is quite often the tips and the tricks they learn along the way. That's why we share these things with you. We hope that it helped you in some way. And you know, you can help us if you'll just hit that like button down below. And if you can think of anybody else that might benefit from these, why don't you try sharing it? That'll help get the word out. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and we'll let you know when the next one comes out. Have an awesome day.